Hello friends, in today's video we are going to discuss about the basics in molecular biology. So molecular biology is a very vast subject which consists of the DNA, genetics, the chromosomes, gene studies, the DNA replication. So for all those things, this is basic is a precursor. So if you have if you are well versed with this basics, your DNA replication or let it be DNA structure, transcription, translation, lack of around concept, the protein gene concepts chromosomal concept and genetic codes everything will be simpler so i thought of making this video uh, especially for those beginners who are weak in basics so let us study some of the basic things which is required in order to study the uh, uh, dna replication or all those things in the future videos so let us see as the development started and when the microscope was invented many scientists was very much interested in cytology work and genetics work so after the discovery of compound microscope and various type of microscopes, autoradiography methods, they were much interested to find out where this gene exactly is, where is, uh, what is it present, how is it present. So many scientists were curious about it. So what happened was at the time in 18th century, in the late 18th century, in the early 19th century, Frederick Mister, one of the bi bi biologists or molecular biologists, we can call it as, he discovered nucleus. So what he did was he took the bandage of the wounded patients and he isolated some cells, pus cells. So pus will be formed by he isolated the pus cells and he found some cellular organelles inside which is inside the cells which they called as he called it as nuclein. Now it is called as nucleus. At that time he called it as nuclein. So that was the first discovery in case of molecular biology where he isolated the pus cells from the bandages, wounded bandages, bleeding bandages and he isolated the pus cells and it discovered nuclein. Later, Altman, after studying that nuclein, he came to the conclusion that it had more of acidic properties rather than basic properties. Since it is having more of acidic properties, he renamed that nuclein as nucleic acid. The name itself says nucleic acid, it is having acidic properties. That was the next uh, discovery. Next was Cosell. So Cosell studied the chemical nature of this nucleic acid and he came to conclusion that this nucleic acid it is made up of three components, the sugar, nitrogenous bases and phosphate group. So he studied the chemical nature of it. What is the chemicals present in it? So how he, he did various experiments to find out this chemicals that are present over it. So the scientist name is Cosell. And Cosell was awarded Nobel Prize in the year 1910 for the discovery of nitrogenous bases like he said that there are two nitrogenous bases purine and pyrimidine we will come to it later so for this discovery he was awarded Nobel Prize this was the discovery of Cosell and also he said that there are some proteins such as histones uh, and also protamines that are associated with this genetic material DNA or they are present along the nucleic acid that was also another discovery of Cosell Later, Fisher, we all know, right, Fisher's projection formula, biochemistry, structures and all, he was the one who elucidated most of the structures. So, the Fisher, Emil Fisher, he found out the structure for all the nitrogenous bases, adenine, guanine, cytosine, thymine, uracil. So, these are the nitrogenous bases we will be, uh, study it here. He was the one who elucidated the structural formula of it. Later, Franklin Stahl. So, Franklin Stahl came and he did various experiments and he proved that the genetic material is present in the nucleic acid and the nucleic acid is responsible for the genetic uh, hereditary or genetic transformation. That was Franklin Stahl's uh, view or this experiment proved it. Later, Levine, another scientist came and he said this nucleic acid can be broadly categorized into two groups. Deoxyribose nucleic acid and ribose nucleic acid. We will study what are those. So, Levine was the one who categorized this nucleic acid into two major groups, deoxyribose nucleic acid and ribose nucleic acid. So the thing, the, the history goes on like this. So what you have to remember is, so the nuclein was isolated from pus cells because of its acidic properties or acidic character it was named as nucleic acid. So the chemical components of nucleic acid was formed, was found out like uh, sugar, nitrogenous bases and phosphate group was uh, given out, elucidated, the structures was given out. And there came two categories called as deoxyribose nucleic acid, which is called as DNA, ribose nucleic acid, which is called as RNA. Next, where is this nucleic acid present or what is this nucleic acid? 
as i said this nucleic acid is a macromolecule or it is a polypeptide chain i can say it as so many monomeric units are joined together to form this macromolecule with the help of bond linkages and all so this is the so what is this monomeric unit or subunit made up of the monomeric unit or the subunit of this nucleic acid is called as nucleotide which is very important it can be asked for two mark questions and all if you are writing any examinations so this what is this nucleotide this nucleotide is a sub unit or it is a monomeric unit it is having energy rich compounds so such many monomeric units are joined together to form a large macromolecule biomolecule called as nucleic acid where is this nucleic acid present nucleic acid is a major component of the nucleus we know the cell cell is made up of cell walls cell membrane you have many organelles such as nucleus mitochondria golgi apparatus endoplasmic reticulum one of the major important master organelle or controlling organelle is your nucleus inside this nucleus is this nucleic acid present it is also found in some ribosomes of certain organisms so this is our brief history of nucleic acids so going further deep as i said you know, the nucleic acid it is made up of nucleotides nucleotides are nothing but the monomeric units or sub units we can call them, call them as so nucleotides are further made by three major components your sugar pentose sugar penta means five so you have five carbon this is your pentose sugar you have five carbon hence it is called as pentose sugar all nucleotides are made up of pentose sugar nitrogenous bases and phosphate group this three is very important pentose sugar nitrogenous bases the because we as a nitrogen atom in the structure we call them as nitrogenous bases and phosphate group or a phosphoric acid group because of this phosphoric acid only it is called as nucleic acid because it gives the acidic properties or acidic characters now let us take about each and everything we will take the sugar group and we will discuss it then we will take about nitrogenous bases and we will take about your phosphate group sugar group so what is the sugar we are, it is called as pento sugar because it is having five carbon atoms so we write it as the first carbon atom second carbon atom third fourth and fifth carbon atom this is called as your ribose sugar so in the second carbon it is h and oh in the first carbon atom second carbon atom h oh h oh h and ch2 oh this is five carbon atom hence it is called as pentose sugar and it is called as ribose sugar also if you remove oxygen from the second carbon atom if you remove oxygen from second carbon atom and if only h is present so here up also h down also h oxygen is removed so from which carbon atom from second carbon atom the oxygen is removed now this is called as 2 deoxy ribose sugar 2 because the second carbon atom i am removing oxygen deoxy because i am removing oxygen in turn for it is d d means removal oxy means oxygen so from second carbon atom i am removing oxygen hence this is called as deoxy ribose sugar the initial thing that i wrote where oxygen is present that is called as ribose sugar see friends this is a major difference between your deoxy ribose nucleic acid which is also called as dna and ribose nucleic acid which is also called as rna so the major difference is in deoxy ribose sugar the oxygen is removed <coughs> in the ribo an rna ribose sugar is present in the dna deoxy ribose the oxygen is removed so deoxy ribose sugar is present so this is all about sugar so you have five carbon atoms you have to remember this numbering of carbon atoms which is uh, useful for the link how the bond is formed it will predict the bond formation this is of the sugar next we will move on to the nitrogenous bases so as i said you this nitrogenous bases are those structure that contain nitrogen atom in them nitrogenous bases is broadly divided into two groups pyrimidines and purines what are pyrimidines so pyrimidines are simple aromatic cyclic structure aromatic cyclic you can see it is like benzene ring right so it is aromatic and cyclic ring structures 
and it has two nitrogen atoms. <coughs> First nitrogen atom, third nitrogen. If the nitrogen atoms are attached in one prime position and three prime position. So whenever this nitrogen is present, we call them as prime. Or to indicate the position of the carbon or nitrogen, we use the term called as prime. One prime, two prime, three prime. The prime means position. So the nitrogen is attached in two places. So here is one nitrogen, that is one prime, and here third prime place. In the other places you have the carbon atoms. So this what is pyrimidine? Pyrimidine is a simple aromatic cyclic ring structure with two nitrogen atom at one prime and three prime position. So pyrimidine has three types: cytosine, thymine, uracil. Cytosine of and thymine is present in DNA, whereas cytosine and uracil is present in RNA. So cytosine and thymine and uracil, these are the three. This is a basic structure of pyrimidine. So if you refer any books or any websites, you get uh, structures for cytosine, thymine, uracil, and all other nitrogen compounds, which is very important. The structures are very important for competitive examinations. So, so this is just a basic structure to show you where the nitrogen atoms are present. So in pyrimidine, the first prime and third prime nitrogen atoms are present. Only two nitrogen atoms. Example, cytosine, thymine, uracil. Cytosine and thymine is present in DNA. Cytosine and uracil is present in RNA. This is an another difference between DNA and RNA apart from the sugar. Another type of nitrogenous base is purine. So this is called as pyrimidine. This is called as purine. So what is purine? Purine is a heterocyclic structure. Hetero means different. So you have two cyclic structure. You can see this is a six carbon. I mean six. No, this is six ringed structure. This is a five ringed structure. So it is different in structure as well as composition. So we call it as hetero means different. Since it is cyclic, we call them as heterocyclic structure. And it is a fused structure. So this what is purine? Purine are larger than pyrimidines because of this uh, complexity in the structure and this purine is made up of fused structure. So one is the, this, this ring is called as imadizole ring. This is a pyrimidine ring. This is imadizole ring. So the imadizole ring and the purine, uh, pyrimidine ring is fused together to form purine. Fused heterocyclic structure. This is also aromatic. This also contains nitrogen. Here you have four nitrogen at one prime, three prime, seven prime, nine prime position. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. At one prime, three prime, seven prime, nine prime. So four nitrogen atoms are present. So this is the difference between pyrimidine and purine. Example of purine is adenine and guanine, which is present in both DNA as well as RNA. So the difference between pyrimidine and purine also may be asked in any examinations. So, uh, just a quick recap of pyrimidine and purine. Pyrimidine is a uh, homocyclic, we can call it as a single structure, simple aromatic structure with two nitrogen atoms at one prime and three prime position. Whereas purine, it is a fused heterocyclic ring structure which contains a pyrimidine ring and imadizole ring. It is fused uh, here and it contains four nitrogen atoms, one prime, three prime, seven prime, nine prime. So, this is about your nitrogenous bases. So, we finished sugar and nitrogenous bases. Nucleotide is made up of three components, sugar, nitrogenous base and phosphate group. Now we are dealing about the phosphate group. So phosphate group is nothing but H2PO4 phosphoric acid. So phosphoric acid, it acts whenever the OH group is present, there the phosphate group goes and attaches and the water molecule is condensed and it forms a phosphodiester bond. Phosphodiester bond is formed water molecule is given out to as a condensation product. So here if you see the sugar molecule, now in the, always in the sugar molecule, the first carbon atom, the nitrogenous bases will be attached. Let it be pyrimidine or let it be purine. Let it be adenine, guanine, cytosine, thymine, uracil. Let it be any nitrogenous bases. Always the nitrogenous bases are attached to the first carbon atom. And and there is one more carbon atom, second carbon atom, there is no OH group because it is deoxyribose. D, I have already removed oxygen, so there is only hydrogen over here. So I cannot remove OH and water molecule cannot be formed from this 
second carbon atom. Even in the fourth carbon atom, there is no OH. OH is there only in the third carbon atom and the fifth carbon atom. Only in these two carbon atom, OH is there. So if my phosphate molecule goes and attaches to these two carbon atom, water molecule can be removed, cleaved off, condensed, and a phosphodiester bond can be formed. So phosphate group is so intelligent that it goes and binds to the fifth carbon atom and the third carbon atom. So if this is the DNA strand, when the DNA strand is beginning or when the DNA is starting of the DNA, the initiation of the DNA strand, the phosphate group goes and attaches to the fifth carbon atom or I call it as phi prime. So the phosphate group is attached to the fifth carbon atom. Hence this end is called as phi prime end. This is very important if you are studying DNA replication, transcription, translation. They will just mention you the application occurs from 5' prime to 3' prime end. So you should know what is 5' prime end, what is there in 5' prime end, what is 3' prime end, what is there in 3' prime end is very important. So that's the major reason why I am explaining you this. So in the fifth carbon atom, the phosphate group is attached. Hence that is called as 5' prime end. So similarly, here another phosphate group is attached to the third carbon atom of the preceding sugar molecule and also to the fifth carbon atom of the succeeding molecule. If I am a phosphate molecule, I have two bonds. One bond is attached to the fifth carbon atom of the preceding sugar molecule. So there is another sugar molecule over me, above my head. So that is, I am a phosphate group. So I am being attached to the fifth carbon atom. So one of the bond is attached with the fifth carbon atom. And another bond is attached with the third carbon atom of the succeeding sugar molecule. So one, one bond is a fifth carbon atom, the other bond is a third carbon atom. So this is how the phosphate is linked throughout the DNA structure. And the initial, the starting place, it is attached only in one place. Only in the fifth carbon it is attached when it begins. There is no three prime because there is no preceding at all. That is a starting compound. Where will you find the preceding sugar molecule? So, there is only phosphate group as the fifth carbon atom. And as the strand goes on, the phosphate group is joined both at the fifth prime end as well as the third prime end. And at the end, at the last sugar molecule, what happens? The phosphate group is not present at the third prime end. This is a termination structure, terminating. So, the DNA strand is getting terminated over here. If you have one more phosphate group, you need one more sugar molecule to attach. There is no sugar molecule. Here it ends up. So here what happens, the phosphate group is attached only in the fifth carbon atom. So this phosphate group and the phosphate group I am attached only at the fifth carbon atom and I am not attached to the third carbon atom. So whatever is there in the third carbon atom that remains as it is. So in the third carbon atom, hydroxyl group is present. Here in between all the hydroxyl groups are cleaved, water is formed and phosphate goes and attaches over here. Phosphate goes and attaches over here. But in this uh, the last region, the phosphate does not go and attaches and the hydroxyl group remains as hydroxyl group. Hence, in this is called as 3' prime end. So, the 3' prime end is a region where the hydroxyl group or the OH group is present. 5' prime end is a region where your phosphate group is present. You have to always remember that the replication occurs from 5 prime to 3 prime. So we will discuss that in another video. So you have to remember this. What is 5 prime end and 3 prime end? So in 5 prime end we have phosphate group and in 3 prime end we have hydroxyl group. So that is about the phosphate group molecule and it is bond by the condensation of water molecule and with the liberation of water molecule and the bond is called as phosphodiester bond. Next we come to this. These two important concepts are there nucleoside and nucleotide. So this is the last part of this video. Nucleoside, when the sugar molecule bonds with the nitrogenous bases, that unit is called as nucleoside. So it is a bonding takes place, glycosidic bond takes place. When sugar molecule, it like a deoxyribose sugar or a ribose sugar. Generally we say pentose sugar. When a pentose sugar links or binds to nitrogenous bases, let it be adenine, purine, or pyrimidine, or guanine, or cytosine, or thymine, or uracil. When the sugar group binds with the nitrogenous base, that unit or that structure is called as nucleoside. Remember this. What is a nucleotide? 
nucleotide is when this nucleoside is joining with phosphate group that is called as nucleotide nucleoside means sugar and uh, nitrogenous bases sugar and nitrogenous bases are called as nucleoside when this nucleoside is joining with phosphate group that is called as nucleotide either i can say nucleoside plus phosphate or i can say sugar plus nitrogenous base plus phosphate group with the help of phosphodiester bonds so this is about nucleoside and nucleotide how does the bonding takes place over here if you see in pyrimidine only the first nitrogen atom binds with the first carbon atom i mentioned already that the nitrogenous bases attack only the first carbon atom so you have to remember that all the other carbon atom having some role to play second carbon atom there is no oxygen the third and fifth carbon atom phosphate group is present only the first carbon atom is present now therefore those nitrogenous bases always attack the first carbon atom if it is a pyrimidine but in pyrimidine if it is cytosine or if it is a thymine or if it is a uracil the first nitrogen atom or one prime nitrogen atom attaches to the first carbon atom and forms a bond if it is a purine let it be adenine or guanine the ninth nitrogen atom or nine prime nitrogen atom binds with the one prime carbon atom why nine prime because here there is one oh molecule here there is one oh molecule one h molecule is needed to for the formation of water so that water is liberated and bond is formed if you see there are four nitrogen atom at the first position there is no nitrogen i mean the nitrogen is present hydrogen is not present hydrogen is required for bond formation and water formation nitrogen is present but the hydrogen is not present so this is of no use even in the third prime nitrogen is present hydrogen is not there this is also of no use in the seventh prime nitrogen is present no hydrogen this is also no use only in the nine prime nitrogen atom there is hydrogen atom linked so when this nine prime nitrogen atom comes in contact with the one prime carbon atom this hydrogen and this oh binds together <coughs> and water is condensed so that this base can attach over here so this you have to remember very well that so if it is pyrimidine one prime nitrogen atom attaches to the one prime carbon atom if it is a purine nine prime nitrogen attaches to the one prime carbon atom so this is about your linking how the nitrogenous bases are linked with the sugar molecules so if so as i said in nucleoside if the deoxyribose sugar is linked with adenine so we uh, we uh, represent symbolically deoxyribose sugar as dr and adenosine as a so it gives deoxyribose adenosine so deoxyribose sugar linked with nitrogenous base that is adenine to form a nucleoside so it gives you deoxyribose adenosine similarly deoxyribose linked with guanine gives you deoxyribose guanosine similarly deoxyribose sugar linked with cytosine cytine cytine it gives rise to deoxycytidine similarly the uh, deoxyribose linked with thymine it gives rise to deoxyribose thymidine so these are the nucleoside this can be again asked for two markers list the nucleosides of dna or list the nucleosides of rna <coughs> so if it is nucleosides of dna deoxyribose adenosine deoxyribose guanosine deoxyribose cytidine deoxyribose thymidine if it is rna first three will be same the last one deoxyribose uracil will come so that is about your nucleoside nucleotide so what is nucleotide i said you nucleotide is the link between the phosphate group plus sugar group plus nitrogenous bases this sugar group and nitrogenous bases is called as nucleoside so i can generally say that nucleotide is nothing but nucleoside plus phosphate group or i can break down this nucleoside into sugar plus nitrogenous bases and i can say nucleotide is a unit where sugar plus nitrogenous base plus phosphate groups are linked together it forms a 
monomeric unit or subunit which all gets polymerized to form a bigger macromolecule called as your nucleic acid. So what happens? It is a combination of nucleoside plus phosphate. So D. So what is the nucleoside? Deoxyribose adenosine plus phosphate. It gives rise to deoxyadenosine monophosphate. So deoxyribose plus adenosine plus phosphate. It gives rise to deoxyadenosine monophosphate, or it is also called as deoxyadenylic acid. Adenylic acid because your phosphoric acid is being attached. So since it is an acid molecule, we are given the name as deoxyadenylic acid. Similarly, if it is guanine, cytosine, and thymine, it is called as guanylic acid. Guanylic acid. If it is cytosine, it is called as cytidylic acid. If it is thymidine, it is called as thymidylic acid. Or deoxyribose guanosine monophosphate, deoxyribose cytidine monophosphate, deoxyribose thymidine monophosphate. Or this is another name. So these are the nucleotides. So they are, may I ask again in any examination, list the nucleotides of DNA or RNA. So this is just a glimpse or an overview that you require for to build up the other basic concepts such as replication, translation and all. So I think I made this basics very clear for you. If the writings are not clear, just listen to me and just make a note of all those things. So structures are available in all websites and all uh, textbooks. Please refer to the structures, they are very important. So in other future videos, we will discuss about the replication, transcription, translation and other concepts of molecular biology. Thank you for watching. Please do like it and share. Thank you.